Hi everybody and welcome to our lesson about geometric abstraction. So this project is based on an artist named Gertrude Goldschmidt. Her name can actually be shortened to her nickname which is Gigo, G-E-G-O, Gigo is the artist name that she went by. Now this artist was born in Germany but moved to um, Venezuela and when she got to Venezuela there was an artistic movement happening called geometric abstraction. So this influenced her style of work and the type of artwork she would do. She made these really beautiful sculptures um, out of wire and iron and steel and other materials. And then they would hang in galleries and really take up volume and space, but with the focus on line. So that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna try to make an artwork in the same style as Gertrude Goldschmidt. So here's a sample of what I made, and we're gonna take some steps and make one as well. All right, so you should have five wires that are about the same length, about uh, maybe two feet, a foot and a half long, and then you should also have a few of these smaller ones. They're about two inches long. Now it's a bit tricky working with this wire, so take your time, be patient, and just enjoy working with a different material outside of something two-dimensional like painting and drawing. So working in three dimension is a challenge for us as an artist and challenges us to think a little bit differently. So how I try to create her work is with this one piece, I would bend it in the shape of a triangle and then here I would loop this around as sort of a connecting point. In her artworks, you'll notice in the corners, there's usually a, a connection piece. And so the connections were actually important in her artwork. They were a point of um, observation, so that the areas where they connect. Here's one little triangle. Now we'll move on to the next one. So on that same piece of wire, without cutting it or doing anything like that, I'm gonna bend it again into another triangle. And when I get to this part here where they connect, I can wrap the wire around again, like that. Okay. And I have a little bit left, just enough to make one more triangle. You should be able to make three per wire. I cut this one a bit short, so I'm actually just gonna leave it as a two triangle. And with this extra piece, I can wrap it around or I can just cut it off. Okay. So you're gonna repeat that exact same process with all of the five wires that you have. Interestingly, Gigo was not trained as formally as an, a visual artist. She was an architect. And now that you know that she's an architect, as you look at her work, it can influence our understanding. And we can see why lines were so important to her. Because in architecture, lines are very important for creating buildings, structures, anything that's built by an architect. They have to be really precise with lines. So I'll make, this one's perfect. I can make exactly three triangles here. Around the time that Gigo was creating her art, other artists were relying on industrial machines or companies to create their sculpture. So they would make the design and then they would send it off to be produced or fabricated in a, in a, in a factory somewhere. But Gigo was determined to do it herself. So while she worked on them her, her own way, she really you know, came up with her own unique style, which is partly what made her such a master of this movement. Okay, so I'm just securing my corners here. Here's an example of our second piece. So I have two so far. And again, you'll do this with all five of them.
So I have one, two, three, four, five. Now comes the connection part. So again, Gogo talked about connections as an important part of her artwork, connecting space, time. Um, her work took up volume, but didn't have volume because it was such thin material. So this is the part where you can be creative and think of how you want to connect them. <clears throat> There's two ways that I listed in the handout and I'll demonstrate them. The first one is if you take two pieces and you find the end of a triangle here and the end of a triangle here, well the end, sorry, the corner. And what I'll do is wrap the wire around there and then the same thing with this triangle. I'll find a triangle, wrap it around and secure them using this piece to connect them. It takes a little work to really connect them securely because as you'll see they can be a bit wiggly um, and not secure. So I'm going to really tighten this wire. It's hard to do it demonstrating. Take some time with it at home and see if you can engineer a better way if you like. Here we go. So this is connecting here. So I've wrapped it around several times and now it's nice and secure. So these two sections are connected. There we go. Now from here, I'm gonna connect another two. This is the second method of connecting that I mentioned in the handout. For this one, you can loop one triangle through another one. And here where the connector point is, you'll find a, an end of a triangle there and just bend it across to secure it. So both styles actually work. Depends on what shape you wanna make or what angles you are doing or what part of the sculpture you're working on. So there's another way to attach to. So you'll continue that method to attach the last piece on. And once you've attached all of them, you can mold it into a shape that you like. So here's one that I made earlier as a demonstration and it came out with this type of shape. Gago mentions that for her, sculpture is like drawing without a line. So when I look at this artwork and I try to think of it as a line, on a paper, but taken off the paper and brought into three dimension, it really helps me to visualize the type of sculpture that I want to make. So as you're working on your sculptures, think about it as drawing without a line. For the last part of the project, we are actually going to head over to a wall. So find a wall in your home, and we're gonna attach your sculpture to the wall the way Gigo's artwork was installed in galleries. All right, so here is the fun part of this project. Now you can install it on a wall somewhere. The, the sample image that you'll see on your handout is um, her installation on a wall. So I just put a tack in the wall right here and I just hung it on the tack, it was really simple. And now you can see some shadows. So part of the artwork are the shadows that are connected to the, the wires and the interplay between the shadows and the wires. So as you can see here, the shadows aren't really strong because the light in the room is dim. But what I'm going to do and what I suggest that you do at home is grab a flashlight if you have one or on your phone. And you can really bring your sculpture to life. So immediately when you shine the light on it, you'll see the shadows in the back. And here's a fun way to play with it even more is to move your light around and the shadows grow from longer to shorter to different directions and it's just a really fun way to bring your sculpture to life and to really think about line and kinetic the kinetic art movement geometric abstraction and how art can really activate a space it can really activate a space with volume and connects to the small connections in the spaces between the wires this is really fun to play with i hope you have fun playing with these at home practice shining a light on it, maybe even make the room darker than the room I have here. And enjoy the project. So that concludes our project of geometric abstraction. I hope you really enjoy it. I hope you take time to work visually in a three-dimensional way. So 
for me as a two-dimensional artist, this is really challenging, but I know that it helps me as I create my own pieces to have stepped out of my comfort zone to try something three-dimensional. And for those of you who love working in three-dimensional um, forms, then this is a great project as well to practice geometric abstraction.